Well, howdy, howdy, howdy. Nearly senior citizen here. Greetings, boys and girls, and welcome to this another brand new day. In my pocket, I have a Hamatron. Of course I do. Why wouldn't I have a hamster in my pocket? I love little rodents. I love these little rodents little so much. They're just the best little rodents in the whole wide world. Oh my gosh, hamsters are just awesome. So he wants to go back to his bed, of course. He was in his nest. Halfway out, I didn't wake him up this time. So I'm gonna put him back. Cause he's a good little guy. Here we go, little one. I know, I know, I know, you're scared. There we go, there we go, you're back. Good deal. Now he's just digging back down into his nest. He wasn't in it. He was halfway out to the side. He was just sort of lounging between his wheel and the, the wall of his cage. So I put one hand down, one hand in, and then just picked him up like that. I don't, oh, well, I do, but I try not to. I don't just glom onto them like that. And so I try to scoop and then get underneath them and then just lift so that I don't have to just go Narr! because, hey, that reminds them so much of, you know, claws, prey, you know, predator going to eat them. So if they can walk onto my hand, there's a lot less fear and terror there. So I pick him up and yeah, he's just getting all comfy in his nest there. Very, very good deal. <clears throat> Some of my hamsters, one specifically, if you irritated him in one nest, he would go off to another nest. He had a nest in each corner. And if you bugged him here, he'd go off to this one way over here. And if you bugged him here, he'd move over here. And he's just, he didn't like being bothered. So, whoops, what fell down? <coughs> <clears throat> no ideas. I have so much junk in here right now. I can clean up. And I do, because I do organize chaos so things get sloppy and horrible. Ooh, boy. That was a terrible frame right there. But things get sloppy and horrible, and then I clean up, and then things are really awesome, and then they fall apart, and then they get bad, and then I clean up, and then they're awesome, and then they fall apart, and, then, and so it's just a cycle. You know, when you're... I don't treat it like my hair. In the comments, I've had this one person say, did you did you get a haircut? And as I've talked about this before, what I do is the method of what is annoying me today. So I don't ever get just a haircut, you know, just every couple weeks work on it. It's every day when I look in the mirror, it's, oh, what's annoying me now? So it's always a constantly evolving haircut, never getting extremely long or anything. It's just whatever happens to annoy me comes off. Same thing with the room. It gets sloppy, I can't find things, I get irritated, I clean it up, and then it gets sloppy, I get irritated. It's just, it's part of being bachelor as well. I didn't have the best habits while married because unfortunately, with the pressures of watching my wife die, I was running away from reality as fast as I could and falling apart. I was falling apart badly mentally. Oh, it wasn't pretty. I'm very, very glad that my wife loved me as much as she did because the pressure was just destroying me mentally. But because of that, I had a computer room in our house and that, that part was just a pigsty. The rest of the house we kept fine, but that I just, uh, because I couldn't deal with, with that. I couldn't deal with the pressures of watching my wife die in front of me and having to clean up and keep things tidy. So it was just, did one, didn't deal with the other. Anything that was me, I just didn't do. So now I still fight with that because that's the way I've been my whole life. Keep it tidy. Fall apart, keep it tidy, fall apart. So it's a constant cycle. It happens. Thumbs up for that. As long as you're comfortable with it and, and you never let things get so bad that they're dangerous. When I was in my death spiral of alcoholism, it was bad and dangerous and literally dangerous. I mean, because my floor as an alcoholic because if you've ever seen google end stage alcoholics you know where people live and you'll see it's nightmares where they live you will frequently find alcoholics end stage alcoholics either living in like a trailer that is just bottles with a very tiny amount of area for them to live in or just 
garbage and trash everywhere and bottles because there's the need to drink also removes the ability to clean up and so my floor when my death spiraled my alcoholism became so bad that I couldn't even clean it or walk on it anymore I just threw some quilts over the top of it and called that the new floor so it was horrific Please do not become an end-stage alcoholic. If, if you feel that you're becoming an alcoholic, if you know you're an alcoholic and you're untreated and you want help, please, there are programs, there are people, there are organizations that will help. They would love to help. Please, if you feel the need to get sober and you're having any sort of difficulty at all, there are resources out there. They will help you. You don't have to go through the end stage and death. I'm lucky. I am so lucky. I mean, literally, my life has been horrific, just absolutely a nightmare, but I'm alive and that's good. So I really shouldn't be. There's so much that I shouldn't have lived through. I mean, my alcoholism, I shouldn't have. They, when I went into rehab, and they had to draw my blood at the hospital to see who my state was. No one had ever seen a living body with that much ammonia in their system because my system was that close to collapse. That much ammonia in their system that, that they'd only ever seen it in corpses. So I should not have been alive in any way, shape or form and yet I lived through it. And I've lived through a bunch of things and stuff that I shouldn't have like when I overdosed on methadone accidentally, when I first was starting up on it, if I overdosed so much, I stopped, ooh, clickety clack, I stopped breathing, and if my children had not found me, even f if it had been even five minutes longer before they had found me, Narcan wouldn't have mattered, I would have been dead. Because I was tired, I went to bed and stopped breathing. And then my children found me and came back out and said, Mommy, Daddy's not breathing. And then she went in there and, yep, I wasn't breathing. And she was screaming at me to breathe. And I would listen to her and breathe for a while and then stop again. And she kept me breathing while the ambulance came. So there's so many times I, I should have died. I shouldn't even be here. So there are resources. There are things. There are ways. If you ever, ever, ever feel that you need to stop but you can't, please just reach out, get help. You can do it. I did. And I'm, I'm nothing. I'm nobody. I'm just a guy. I'm just, I happen to be a very lucky guy. I mean, rolling the dice, the percentile dice. I've never come up yet with a, you know, a fumble where it's automatic death yet. I should have. Sometimes it's been spinning with that one gonna come up, but it goes thunk and falls on a different number after everyone going, oh, this time you're a debtor. Wow. So, woof. But definitely, I mean, you have to take care of yourself. You have to. You have to. And there are people that do care, and that is a very, very good thing. So there are resources. If you ever feel that you have to stop it, you can't you can there's help it's not the end it's rarely the end it's rarely too late I mean sometimes yes it's too late who hasn't heard the stories of the alcoholic that got sober and then died in three years everyone looks at that and says gosh you know it was getting sober that killed them it's like no they were so badly damaged that after they got sober they lived for another three years if they hadn't gotten sober, that would have been another month. So yeah, sometimes it's too late in that you're going to die anyway. But make the best use of your time and make those sober times before you go the best ones you can have. There's no need to sink into, into horrid stuff. Which... Which, which reminds me, I wanted to talk about this so much and I'm going to have to do this really quick. Lemmy of the group Motorhead, who's dead now, and I don't know the full details. There were three things that killed him all at once. He was over 70 years old. He had diabetes, brain cancer, and something else. And all three of those things came in and killed him real fast, real hard. But it's amazing because at it, it, like age 18, 
He started drinking and smoking and doing drugs. He advocated telling people, he told them on videos and such, buy your Jim Beam, your alcohol in bulk, it's cheaper. And he would, he would buy crates of Jim Beam and he would drink at least a bare minimum of a quart of Jim Beam a day on top of taking whatever drug people threw at him, on top of smoking two packs of cigarettes a day, on top of eating nothing but cheese and meat. And on top of that, when he wasn't on tour with the group Motorhead, he didn't exercise. He played video games, drank, smoked, and did drugs. The only exercise he got was playing in the band Motorhead. And when he got close to 70, and, and when he was close to 70 and the doctors were doing tests on him, he had the liver of an 18 year old. His body was in beautiful health, beautiful shape. He started to get diabetes toward the end. His only concessions to that were on the second encore of the band's group, he asked them to slow down so that he could keep up a little easier and he cut down on his smoking. And that was it. That was the only concessions he made toward his health. I, good Lord, a God among men. <laughs> I, he just drank like a fish, took whatever drugs there were, ate garbage, didn't exercise, and he had the body of an 18 year old all the way up until all of a sudden when he hit like 70 all of his spells of protection wore off <laughs> and then three things came in and wham he was dead there was no lingering there was no slow decay in fact up until a week before his death he was still just pouring it down and smoking so man you, you can never tell you can never tell and there is one Motorhead song that I really, really like. And I can't even remember the full title of it. But, it, oh, I think it's called Die You Bastard. Because the song, of course, is the point being, you know, I'll be with you with, till the day you die. So die, you bastard. And it was like, I, I like that. And I was like, I'm going to be with you till the day you die. So die, you bastard. <coughs> Past that, not a whole lot been going on. I'm still doing my daily walkies. Last night I went walkies. It had been raining all day yesterday. In the first 20 minutes of it, I had to fight a, a, a horrible storm. My umbrella was like held at an angle like this straight in front of me because the wind was so hard. And the wind in the rain was coming in so much that within the first 15, 20 minutes, my shoes and feet were soaked, drenched from the calves down. And then after that first 15 minutes, boom, rain went away and it was dry. So for the remaining hour and a half walk up to Walmart and back, I had to walk in cold, wet, soggy shoes and socks. Yay. But I still did it and it was good. It wasn't that cold. I went out basically with a shirt like this and another shirt like this and then my black summer jacket. And even then I didn't even keep it zipped up. I mean, I get cold, 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 cold. I mean, as it is, I wear these two shirts now and I used to have just the one fleecy blanket and a towel on my bed. Now I put a second fleecy blanket on top of the bed because it's just so cold. And I wear an undershirt. Oh, the concessions we have to make to age. There's a lot less of me, so I get cold so much easier. <laughs> uh, and at the same time, what there is of me is much more efficient, thicker, leaner meat, and that it pumps out BTUs like crazy. I, I'm like a, a living furnace, it's nuts. So I really don't need much. I overheat real quick. That's why I have to dress in layers because I can control my own heating that way. If I got the, the flannel shirt and then a jacket over the top of that, well, of course, I can button the, the flannel thing or I can roll up the sleeves or I can keep the jacket unzipped or I can keep the jacket unzipped and the shirt buttoned and 
there's so many things I can, can do to control my individual heating. It's awesome. Whereas just a big fluffy coat, oh my God. I When I go out walking, I have to take it off and tie it around my waist because I, I just overheat. Even if it's snowing. Ugh. Oh my gosh. I've opened up 24 hours worth of comments on my community tab. Actually, I did 24 hours worth. It was only like five or six five or six <laughs> page down so <clears throat> the mr beast comments have largely gone away entirely mr beast uh, has done nothing didn't expect him to but it's, people were trying to help so that's awesome but i have opened up 24 hours i'm going to go through and thank 20 to 25 people it is a range american sign language even though i count in front of my face i get lost if I mispronounce the username, no disrespect is intended, and I'm not reading the comments right now. I'm just thanking you for having left a comment. Good comment, bad comment, and different comment. The fact is you left a comment. Thank you very, very much. Where is it? There it is. Too chill. Thank you very, very much. And joke evil. Greatly appreciated. G-O-A-T. Thumbs up and thank you. RD Catch 2201 Thank you very, very much. And Lucifer. Greatly appreciated. Chris. Just C-R-I-S. Greatly appreciated. Subscribe to PewDiePie. Thumbs up and thank you. Clean HD. Greatly appreciated. Bone 99. Thumbs up and thank you. Candy Queen. Thumbs up and greatly appreciated. Antel Games. Thumbs up and thank you. Neo 200. Thank you very, very much. Ethan Demers, greatly appreciated. And Kevin Tucker, greatly appreciated. Bronchkin, thumbs up and thank you. And Toons, <coughs> greatly appreciated. And Red Light District 1, thank you very, very much. And Nutty 1, greatly appreciated. Aiden, thumbs up and thank you. Dashao Urs, I think it is. Thumbs up and thank you. Greatly appreciated. Casper the Friendly Ghost Blats. <laughs> Thumbs up and thank you. Greatly appreciated. Yetsu Ye K-pop. I sure hope I'm close, but I bet I'm not. Thank you very, very much. And Billy John, nope, Billy John Hodges. I always get confused in the 22, 23, 24 range because it switches from like this to using your thumb and then back off. And for whatever reason, I get confused with that. And then we have, he needs some milk. What? Thank you very, very much. And last but not least, Leon Lawlad. Thank you very, very much, each and every one of you. You get me out of my head, into the world, dealing with actual people. Thank you very, very much. It is appreciated. Definitely a thumbs up. Hopefully my hand gestures are much more natural now. My first couple years, I know I was very stilted in my hand stuff because I was just so oh, asleep. And I know in a year's time, looking back at this, as much as I'm awake now is the way I was, I'm going to look back and go, gosh, I hear I thought I was so awake and I was still sleepwalking. So, life is funny. But still, I, hopefully I look and act much more natural than I did back when I was a badly broken man. I'm still badly broken, but I'm much more put together now. 25%. I've got my base of foundation back together instead of just exploded mind everywhere. So hopefully. I try my best to be human. I'm not always good at it though. You can check my various links. I have Twitter, Facebook, GoFundMe, Patreon.com. I have NearlySeniorCitizen.com if you wanted to check that out. It's a blog. I haven't done anything on it yet. Going to. <coughs> Excuse me. You can check out my various links. I have Twitter, Facebook, GoFundMe, Patreon.com. I just said all that, didn't I? <laughs> it's been that kind of morning. And of course, if you could subscribe to my GoFundMe campaign or become a Patreon.com patron like one of these beautiful and awesome people, that would be beautiful and awesome. But if you cannot donate or you simply do not donate, I take all good wishes and deposit them in the bank of my heart where I draw interest. So thank you very much. And if you can toss me a like, I do appreciate all the positive validation I get for my existence. And of course, if you could subscribe to the channel, that would be cool. Greatly appreciated. Now, I would understand if you don't want to, but if you are down with it, I will do my best to keep you entertained from now until the literal end of time. 3D House of Thumbs Up. If anyone remembers back in the days, late 70s, early 80s, with John Candy and SCTV. 3D House of Thumbs Up. No oh, shucks. Anyway, hopefully I've got a game video, hopefully a reaction video, hopefully a game video for my game channel. I keep falling asleep still, so I haven't been able to live stream. But you take care. Have a great day today. I will see you on the flip side, my friend, and that is a very good thing.
absolutely. I keep getting these all on wrong on time. <laughs>